Despite us now finally having a gameplay trailer for the long-awaited Metroid Prime 4, we still know basically nothing about this game. After the last Direct trailer, what we know is that this is where the game will presumably take place, this is presumably the main villain, and that this will release in 2025. Presumably. Oh yeah, Metroids. But other than that, we still pretty much know nothing about this game, which is weird considering we've known about its existence for over 7 years at this point. However, there is one major detail that I think many of us have failed to consider and even think about in regards to Prime 4, and funnily enough has nothing to do with the actual contents of the game itself. It all stems from this singular question, what console is Prime 4 releasing on? Now, the most likely answer is of course the Switch. I mean, obviously, right? The game was first announced to be in development in its inaugural year, and from what we've been told will of course be released on the Switch, because in reality, what else would it release on? It's Nintendo's only console both home and handheld, but as we Nintendo fans know, 2025 is shaping up to be quite an interesting year. Now, I have talked about the possibilities in regards to the Switch 2 before. I am of the firm belief that the Switch 2 will be the long-awaited Switch Pro we've been hearing about for years. However, at the time of making this video, we know virtually nothing about this console that's supposed to release next year. And whether or not the Switch 2 ends up being the Switch Pro or something completely new, I am of the firm belief that Metroid Prime 4 will in fact be a cross-generation game. Now, what exactly is a cross-gen game? Well, I'm guessing most of you watching are already Already familiar with the concept, but for those who aren't, it's basically a game that releases on at least two different console generations at the same time. Specifically, and this must be prefaced, same day releases. Something like Mario Kart 8, which I've talked to death about, is not a cross-gen game, mainly because of the three-year gap between its original release on Wii U and the Switch. The best examples of cross-gen games are the latest installments of the Call of Duty franchise and, unironically, the Just Dance games up until 2020. All of the most recent Call of Duty games have all been released on the newest generations of consoles, i.e. the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series line of consoles, as well as the previous generation's line of consoles, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One line of consoles. Similarly, Just Dance up until 2020 has been releasing new entries on the latest generations of consoles while also still releasing on the Wii <coughs> and the Wii U until 2019. Now, there is another game that also works as an amazing example of what a cross-gen game is that I have neglected to mention until now, and in fact is probably one of the biggest pieces of evidence or reasoning I have for why I firmly believe that Prime 4 itself will be a cross-gen game. In 2017, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild would release for both the Nintendo Switch and the Wii U on the same day. The story behind Breath of the Wild's development lasted for a number of years before it was finally released. Although it's still heavily debated on whether or not this was the true start, much of this story begins with the Wii U tech demo first shown off in 2011. This was the world's first real look at what an HD Zelda could be. Now, at the time, this was nothing more than a tech demo, and as many would state, was not indicative of what Zelda for Wii U would become. But what this did show was that there were plans for a Wii U Zelda just as every previous Nintendo console had. In 2013, the first year after the Wii U's release would be the first time we would hear anything concrete about a Wii U Zelda game that eventually became Breath of the Wild. And over the next three years, we would continue to get new looks at the game with a constantly changing release date. What's most important about this story is that up until 2016, Breath of the Wild was seen and treated as a Wii U exclusive. It wasn't until Nintendo started to fully shift gears towards the Switch that Breath of the Wild would then change to be a cross-generation title. In fact, if you remember the Switch's release back in 2017, it was very commonly referred to as the Zelda machine up until that year's E3 despite it also being on Wii U. Now, I also want you to keep in mind that despite how similar these stories are to each other, there are some pretty glaring differences between them as well. For instance, the Switch is not a dying console. One of the biggest factors I believe that played into making Breath of the Wild a cross-generational game is that by 2015, it was clear that the Wii U was a critical and financial failure with things only seeming to get worse. We often forget how much of a devastating blow the Wii U was to Nintendo at large with how quickly their turnaround with the Switch was. Additionally, we got constant tangible updates about Breath of the Wild from 2013 up until its 2017 release. Most important of these were constant trailers and gameplay footage which we are only now getting for Prime 4. Breath of the Wild was first announced to be in development in 2013 with our first actual look at the game being in 2014. In contrast, Metroid Prime 4 was first announced to be in development in 2017 with us getting our first actual look at the game in 2024. 
Now, don't get me wrong, I firmly believe a precedent has been set by Breath of the Wild, but we also can't ignore the fact that these aren't one-to-one -one comparisons. And thankfully, this is not the only basis in which I believe Prime 4 to be a cross-generation game. The Switch OLED model is such a confusing device. I mean, the thing itself is obviously just as simple to understand as the basic Switch, but to call this thing a pro model or hell a worthwhile upgrade would be quite a stretch. Oh wow, less than an inch difference in screen size, a bigger kickstand, and still a sorry excuse for built-in console storage at $50 increase? Count me in! The Switch OLED model is a confusing creature for sure, but there is a very good reason as to why I'm bringing it up here, and it has everything to do with its strange relationship with Metroid Dread. See, when we look at the the OLED's initial reveal back in July of 2021, the first ever game shown playing on the console was, you guessed it, Metroid Dread. In fact, when we look at the specific OLED-only advertisements, which are surprisingly sparse, only a handful of games were used to promote it, with the most prominent being Metroid Dread and the E3 footage of Tears of the Kingdom, primarily this footage of Link flying. Now, obviously, I did not build this whole little section on the fact that Dread was prominent in OLED's marketing as evidence, because the actual release of both Dread and the OLED model do most of the heavy lifting. October 8th, 2021 is a significant day for two reasons, as it was both the release day for one of the most notorious Lost games ever, as well as the Switch's slight enhancement. To get both Dread and the OLED on the same day was kind of cool, as not only were people treating it as a hot new game release, but also somewhat as a new console drop as well. And as for me, it was just another day to go amiibo hunting, but the fact that these two were both released on the same day is quite significant in itself. Let's be honest here, there really was no concrete reason as to why this was. It's not like Metro Dread was meant to show off the OLED. Both could easily have been released on two separate dates, but Nintendo chose to release them together. Maybe I'm looking too much into this, but maybe this is a sign that Metroid is now, for a brief time, being used to promote Nintendo's newest consoles. So, when I talked about Metroid Prime Remastered in the last video, I really didn't mention how much of a graphical upgrade the game really was. The game itself is downright gorgeous, to the point that I've had friends who've had no idea what I was playing ask if I was playing a modern AAA game. But this has also led to another discussion about Prime 4's graphics and if they are or aren't too much for the Switch. Let's face it, at the end of the day, Metroid Prime Remastered, as beautiful as it is, is just that, a remaster of a 2002 GameCube game. I think we all know that it would look very bad on Nintendo if their new AAA Metroid game fails to surpass the original game, remaster or not. Obviously, with the over 20 years difference between the two games, Metroid Prime 4 is expected to be the superior title in terms of general scope and scale, but also graphics as well. And from what we've seen, the little that is, I would say that this is going to be a much grander game in both scope and visuals. But could it be too much? I would argue potentially. I don't think this game will be downright unplayable on the Switch, but there may be an advantage to playing this on a newer console, very similar to how Miles Morales has a version for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. Prime Remastered has established the Prime series as a huge graphical showcase for Nintendo. I've never played Primes 2 or 3, but I would even be willing to argue that Nintendo is waiting for the Switch 2 to actually release them, assuming of course they're both bigger than the original. Obviously, I'm not going to discuss that any further because that's more of a personal unfair founded assumption, but the point to be made here is that the Prime games have proven themselves to be able to go head to head with modern AAA games. There is no scenario where Prime 4 doesn't release on the Switch, but that doesn't mean that the Switch has to be the most optimal way to play it either, and even though I'm somewhat suggesting that it would be more optimal for the Switch too, that by no means means it'll be unplayable for the Switch either. At this point in time, no one really knows the specs of the Switch 2, but it can be easily assumed that it will be at least slightly more powerful than the Switch we have now. So for Nintendo not to take advantage of this for a series that's proven itself to be a graphical showcase for them just doesn't make that much sense. The last aspect I want to highlight here is the timing of Prime 4's release. Obviously, both the Switch 2 and Prime 4 are set to release in 2025, and I find it extremely hard to believe that Nintendo would let Prime 4, a game that we have all been waiting for for, by the time it releases, 8 years, out to dry. It just wouldn't make that much sense. Why would Nintendo sabotage one of their most anticipated titles, I would say, ever? And out of everything discussed in this video, I believe the timing to be the most damning piece of evidence for Prime 4 being a cross-generational game. Let's face it, this is not a small title. This is going to be on the scale of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, if not bigger. And for Nintendo to just sweep it under the rug with the Switch 2 would make no sense. Why would you release a highly anticipated game that fans have been waiting for for almost a decade 
and just to have it be swept under the rug by your new console. It makes no sense. In fact, I think Nintendo would be really stupid if they were to do that. In previous videos structured like this where I've posed to all of you a question, I have generally left them open-ended, leaving it up to you, the viewer, to determine whether or not I'm suggesting to be true. However, in this case, I am of the firm belief that I have presented enough evidence to convince you all that Metroid Prime 4 will in fact be a cross-generation game between the Switch and Switch 2. And if you don't believe me, fuck you. I don't fucking know.